what do you think people are going to love about this story? I mean, I hope that after a year and a half of people being stuck indoors, whether they were alone or with their partners, whether that led to being more in love with their partners or wanting to divorce from whoever they were with, I hope that when they watch this film, they feel a sense of um, freedom and that they feel like a resurgence of the feelings that you have when you first meet someone and when you first fall in love with someone. Because I think so often in life, you know, we make these big life choices and then we feel in a way like we're stuck in something and we have to remind ourselves that like love is a choice. Love is something you have to constantly choose. And I think that Jennifer and Anthony constantly choose the love that they share. And that's what, what leads them to this beautiful journey that they end up being on. And, and I hope that people at home um, find that feeling and that resurgence of, of love within themselves. I, I definitely did, even with the, the beautiful scenery and the European scenery and how everything was captured and in terms of like getting back out into the world. Um, tell me about the forbidden love affair between you guys. Um, Callum, do you want to say something? Well, I mean, it's forbidden, but that it, there's, something, there's something that shouldn't be forbidden about it because uh, I guess that they're, they've met their one and it's just... Uh, incredibly unfortunate that she's married to someone else and that becomes then the dilemma for Anthony and for Jennifer too and how to how to navigate that situation but uh, if you are able to meet someone that is the yin to your yang or um, makes you feel whole makes you want to feel alive then you're incredibly lucky and these, these two people have that even if it's for a brief moment or for a lifetime and um uh, they're equally lucky and unlucky at the same time. Yeah, I have to say, I was really struck by the train and you were waiting till the very last second to get in and that that pain on your face, um, that was um, amazing. Um, the fashion also, it was a huge part of this movie. Shailene, you wore so many chic outfits, um, there's so many wardrobe changes and all of those really pretty chic um, pillbox hats. Tell us about your experience in all of those wardrobe changes. Yeah, the wardrobe was amazing. We had a great costume designer who was so passionate about her job and very, very well researched and knew exactly what this type of woman in that time era would be wearing, um, which was very helpful and, and very inspiring. And the accessories were just delicious. I mean, the gloves, the lace, the silk, the, the pillbox hats, the corsets, the triangle shaped bras, all of it like really, um, it's easy when you're, when you're playing a character that looks like yourself to feel like yourself in a way. But when you look in the mirror after you have rollers in your hair and a pillbox hat on and your nails all done and, and a specific type of makeup, you feel like you are that other person. And I love when you have the opportunity to do that as an actor because you, you do feel physically transported. Now, um, love letters are such a lost art form, but um, some of the other people I've talked to this morning have had their own experiences with love letters. Have, have either of you have some cool stories about exchanging love, love letters? Yeah, I love I I actually met um, someone that I had a romantic relationship with years and years and years ago via love letters. We were I guess they weren't handwritten, but they were email letters and we would send each other these crazy long emails back and forth for six months before we ever met. And and we got to know each other's like inner hearts before we saw like all of the projections and the insecurities on the outside. And when you write a letter, I think you're really showing, you're revealing your soul to somebody instead of um, trying to make them think that you are a certain way. And I think there's a, there's a specific vulnerability that comes with that, that I just, I really adore and love. And is, is Aaron a love letter type of guy or what's your guy's love language? Does he do laundry to make you breakfast or um, tell us about that? He has, I, I'd say he has all the love languages. He's a, he's a really well-rounded guy when it comes to love languages. <laughs> and I know that you had previously said that um, you haven't watched football. Um, have you brushed up on any of that? And are you excited to watch him play? I'd never seen a football game before I met him. Um, and I have now seen lots of football games on TV, but I've never seen one in person because 
lovely COVID has prevented that from happening. So I do look forward to going to a football match one day. I think it would be fun now that I understand the rules of the game and how it works. Right. And you had mentioned at the beginning of our conversation about um, just being stuck inside, but would you say for your relationship that kind of helped you guys get to know each other a lot better? I think there's something to say about anonymity, anonymity and privacy and having um, your moments be your moments without the whole world trying to question or, or understand what they are, what they mean. And, and that was a true gift for, for us during COVID.